Today on the Mike O'Mara Show. I was on the phone with Doris Kearns Goodwin. We were doing a video call during COVID promoting this event. I bet and she's it, a class act. Tell me I'm right she, about that. She's very and she's very polite, very nice. Uh, right. now, I heard we were, very foul mouth. <laughs> yes, just foul like mouth. a sailor. Oh, oh, Mike is uh, prepping to do Brando. Everything's hard today for some reason. Well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And by the way, for people that don't know, Rob is a product of a broken home. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. And uh, what happened was uh, Sharon gave birth. Rob yeah. was in the crib. She they shot. both went into the nursery together, and uh, there he was in the bassinet. Condo Bob looked down at the baby and uh, looked at Sharon and said, well, look at him. We can't possibly stay together. That's right. The first sound I heard as a child, Mike, was a revving automobile. <laughs> <laughs> All that and more. The Mike O'Mara Show starts now. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. You are listening to America's Voted by the listeners, uh, America's Greatest mm-hmm. Podcast by uh, Pod World Magazine. Yeah. We are delighted yeah. to be coming to Do you, you in Great Towns. Do you still take Pod World? No, no, you don't. You don't. You just let me say it, and you don't. We don't do future. Well, he doesn't get it. It's just like you throw that out there and let people stew. If we, if he wants to advertise that we're doing a bit, and then it ruins it. So you know, we could start the show again, but I don't want to do it that okay, way. I just sorry, wanted I to throw it. it out there. That's okay. Ruined. Uh, you don't. Your mind doesn't work that way. But you're very funny when it comes to like certain things, as I've told you. Hey, he privately might, and, and he publicly. might be dying. No, I don't think so. He ruined our day yesterday. Ruined yeah. your day? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about Paul that, Bridge, too. Uh, Paul, Paul Bridge, Montana, Evanston, <laughs> Illinois, Izmir, Turkey, Ashdod, Israel, uh, Rosario, Santa Fe, Argentina, and uh, London, England. I really meant to say that in what would be a kind and sympathetic oh my way. God. When you, uh, you know, w- w- you've got some further things you have right, to, to address. explore. Uh, and they are, uh, as I've spoken to people about it, of a preca- precautionary yes. nature. Yes. As I said to family and friends last night, when your name came up about that, that, you know, yeah. it, it's it's a moment mm-hmm. of pause, uh, but that you had done very, very well in other areas You're of still your in the game. Uh, yeah. Still, yeah. And I don't think... We're I, all going to die think, eventually, Mike. But I don't think Oscar would say that if, if you were in imminent danger like we thought you were a while back. I no, hope not. No, this is... I'm in a much better place than I was, say, four months ago. Yeah. 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 But I mean, you, you know, you when it comes to, uh, let's see, sponsor relations, uh, dry uh, wit behind the scenes no. we don't need to make a that's list designed, you're a ten out of ten. that's designed to you know perhaps conjure a certain image with the listeners that's where you don't you don't click on that because you don't want oh, it. Oh, you, I thought, you don't okay, I got you. what i'm trying to do is to do a flip yeah. thing that'll probably amuse you and uh and then make you furrow your brow yeah. and then have listeners go hey that's pretty good yeah, because there'll be a, a good chunk of people well, it doing did that amuse me and that's why i wanted to follow up on i know I I, but the follow-up wrecks it the follow-up does it. Not this always. is what the follow-up does. Well, not always, but in that case, that's what the follow-up does to it. The follow-up uh, will be like, oh, they're just kidding around. Yeah. And it's a way of being safe, in yeah. a way. Do you under- I, I know I'm really overanalyzing No, this, I know what you mean. It's, okay. yeah. it's a way of saying, hey, we're okay. It's yeah. like explaining a joke. Yeah, it's like Rickles singing, I'm a nice guy. Yeah, it doesn't really work. No, you're right. You're right. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's uh, the way it is. So we're delighted to have you here. Uh, in uh, where, what did he write down? What did that? Say? We have a little code word for each other, which is smile. <laughs> when I'm being a dick. No, no just no, no. overall. I I walked in to a, a Podville notepad. Like other shows. This was a few days yeah, ago. Other shows use this uh, the studio. God bless them. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the business and uh, the camaraderie. Uh, and they, someone had left a notepad that said smile. It just says one word, smile, in yeah. capital letters. And when Oscar came in, I just said, oh, someone left you a note. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very nice. 
That is very, very, very nice. <laughs> Extraordinarily um, nice. Yeah, I, I you know we, you're on uh, camera. Smile. smile. So yeah, if you didn't, and by to recap, if you didn't listen yes. yesterday, uh, shame on you. Uh, fool Boo. me once. We know your name. Ooh, yes. But Rob got, uh, you know, uh, from his liver doctor, the, uh, the, the, the doctor that matters. What exactly was it? I'm sorry, because I don't remember the exact detail. What did he elevated say? Elevated markers for the kidney and tumors. Mm-hmm. Uh, elevated tumor markers. And they oh, think. So you didn't say that. Yet. I you did. Didn't, you didn't did, say tumor. I did exactly no, say you didn't that. Say no, no, he no. Didn't yeah, say, no, you didn't say tumor. I wrote it down. I wrote it you down. Said, you didn't say tumor. But You didn't say tumor? Yeah, elevated markings for tumors. But a lot of this could just be kidney stress. Because do you remember him saying that no. yesterday? That's what I wrote down I, to I, say. Tony, do you, you remember him on. saying that yesterday? No, nothing about tumors. I just right. heard yeah. l- some elevated Elevated levels markers and, is what he said. And he did another MRI. Okay, yeah. so Let me that write is, that down. the problem is, <clears throat> is that Mike is going to be okay. They no, think I, you Mike don't have to tell me that. The kidney is probably under too much stress right now. Because I was on two diuretics because of extreme water retention yes. prior to the procedure. I am not going to burden you with uh, having to talk me down because yeah. you know what? You're the one dealing with it. God bless just, you. Just know we, you know. It's, it's, it's what and what? I want to look this up. I believe, you know what? After the show, yeah, I will actually look it It's been happy tumors, time. Yes, and, when, uh, and now we begin the lovely process of the waiting game. I live vicariously through you with this. Yeah. Uh, because it's like if one of my kids wasn't uh, feeling yeah, or, well. Yeah. But my uh, because, mom, because I, got a, I got a shout out to my mom who got my appointment two weeks earlier. With Because getting an MRI around here is like trying to find a four-leaf yeah, clover. Yeah, what the F with that? And I'm sorry, folks, if we're talking about this too this much. Is but this new. is what we, this Breaking is what the news. three tumors. principles on this show care about. Stones and tumors? Not stones, no, no. We care about it. Right. So we're talking about it because it's helpful. And I probably compartmentalize and rob certainly compartmentalizes to get through what we're doing uh and if i can and rob you can corroborate because this is really you and not us i put the rob and And corroborate i i have to say there has to be uh, and i will do kind of a pantomime of it that when you got that it's like great yeah well right which is like effing a after all you have effing done, I had three months of waiting and waiting and waiting and right. waiting, and then yeah. I got pretty much a clean bill of health until November, and I was ready yeah. to take a, a sigh, heave a sigh of relief, right? Because I thought I had an easy go medically for the next few yeah. months, and then and by the way, in, in the middle of that, and I have to give you your props and your credit for that, you have dramatically altered your uh, life yeah. and and responded. Uh, just rapidly, there was no uh dragging you into any of this. Not that there should be when you've no, got well, a, really no a condition choice. that could be. Yeah. You have no choice, but at the same time, you can grab it. Uh, look, there are people that have no choice that mm-hmm. doesn't matter to them. And I know true. those people because they're That's not here true. anymore. Yeah. So, you know, I, I would imagine that was just like, oh, great. And now, as you said, getting an MRA in the uh, belly of the beast up there is uh, difficult like any major city August and medical 2nd care. Is, it's looking like it's going to be August 2nd in the morning. That's terrific. So that's, that's great. Pretty, that's pretty quick turnaround. That's not that's bad. That's a very, very, very when quick turnaround. When I was turnaround. up to my own, it was, I believe, August 18th. When the doctor, when a liver specialist at one of the most lauded hospitals in the world George uh, Georgetown Hospital, Georgetown University Hospital says, yes. "Get an MRI as soon as you can." And I said, "I call them. I say, I need an MRI as soon as I can, per the direction of this doctor." They said, "Well, we have something in the evening of the seventeenth or the morning of the eighteenth, yeah. and that's they, a month away." It's and they month. are so used to dealing with people like that that it's uh, not funny. My question, uh, one last question, and we'll move on from okay. this because uh, right. you're living. Yeah, it. You've ruined our uh, afternoon. Again, ruined. <laughs> ruined. <laughs> no, it helps actually to get it off of my because okay. I don't realize until I'm looking at him that I uh, and I'd had a really nice exchange with Rob uh, the night before you dropped that on me where I had said I was so you know it was pleased very with, sweet with, of you, with, yeah. with what he had done and and his uh, you know getting through these months without uh, the hooch which is tough you know yeah. because I love the stuff I'm just crazy about it. Um, <laughs> And it loves you too, Mike. <laughs> so I the the last question I had about this, the previous one you had. The previous MRI. There, 
Yeah, right? There was nothing flagged on that at all, Well, correct? here's the thing. I don't know if you remember that the first time I went in for an MRI, I got sent home because they said, really, what you need is an MRI with contrast. Yeah. Definitely and, right, and they didn't and want they to do get, that. No, they wanted to at the MRI place. They couldn't get the insurance company. They couldn't get the ahead. insurance to cover it. Effers. And so we went ahead a couple weeks later and got one without contrast. They sent that to the liver specialist. And mostly based on my numbers, he wants one with contrast, just okay. to be sure. And okay. that, but also by the time that rolls around, the numbers may have improved. I'll get blood work done about a week from today. Okay, that that will help me, you know, from the blood level to uh, from the blood scores to react Sharon. To way to go, it. by the way. Yeah, she's uh, the absolute wait, wait, greatest. Way to kick she ass shall. and get your son Thank in there she early. Oh, What'd uh, you call her? She saw. She saw. She saw. She show. She show. She show. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just we care. This and is so we my have to mother. Bend. She show. She show. She show. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, we had a. Wonderful nine-year-old's birthday last night, and it was. Uh, by the way, we have our talking head coming up. Nothing more minutes. joyful than yeah. a child's birthday, yeah. Mike. Oh, by the way, for those of you that uh, shared with a couple of people uh, some some feedback, you know, hey, when it's the talking head segment, I just turn it down because I don't care about anybody except me. Lick my Irish bag. Mm. And do it slowly and 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 screw with, you with who purpose. said that. <laughs> slowly Love that purpose. segment. I enjoy know it. It's a chance to yes. Yes. Uh, so last night was uh we originally were scheduled to go to the melting pot. And I think every major city has a melting pot, mm -hmm. a fondue restaurant, which is just more nasty. Like, more like a fondant. Yeah, well, you know what? And I'm sure a lot of people love it. And I shouldn't say no, it's, it's nasty. It's garbage. Because for some people, it's fine. But uh, it's we a pivoted. Date, date place. It's a, yeah, it's, you dip stuff and mm -hmm. then. Uh, you you start we, with a cheese course, then you can fry your meat, and yeah, then you close yeah. out with a chocolate dipping experience. He's been there. He knows. I've very, read about it. Nice. I've never no, been no. to a melting pot. No. Oh, we got video of taking my daughters and my mom there. Uh, you know, and mom, if you're looking down, I'm sorry. One of your last meals with me. Uh, you know, we could have done better. Well, I, so she it, was upset that you refused to use the stick. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> well, man, did that burn my finger? I bet, you know, especially when that I meat dipped course. it into the hot oil. Oh, <laughs> God! So we pivoted <laughs> and we did a uh, Japanese steakhouse, and everybody's got those. Yes, I used to talk about them in Manassas. That uh, you know, and I talked a little bit on the show yesterday about it. So we end up going to the place. The place's name Wasabi. Oh. Isn't that clever? Mm. Oh, you know what? I bet what you they named. Famous? I bet you they named the uh, the sauce after that restaurant. <laughs> Rob, Rob had a business interest uh, years ago in a Japanese steakhouse, uh, but the name turned people off. He called it Arizona. Yeah, I did, and, and uh, I don't know why just, people wouldn't was, go. Uh, it was a, well, it was a World War II motif, and you didn't. Uh, you know the Pearl Harbor thing. People don't what want to be reminded. I remember our motto: prices are sinking. <laughs> So it didn't a surprise go over attack too on well. your taste buds was another one we had, which was great. And also, I remember this one: after you eat here, you'll harbor no ill will. Oh, and yet oh they God. wouldn't come, Mike. <laughs> Not even come. the sake night was a success. Even when you gave away the, you know, the the free uh, synthetic pearls, uh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably not. Uh, anywho, so <laughs> happiness is your own table oh, yeah. at a Japanese steakhouse with just your people. Mm -hmm. And my buddy Oli's in town, uh, and, and so I invited him, and he came last night. Was it night. an eight-seater? It was an eight-seater. Beautiful. We had, how many cool. people we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had eight. We oh, had eight people. Perfect. And perfect. it was great. And nobody else was there because it's uh, seasonal, you know, down here where I live in a resort area. And so it was Dade. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was fantastic. We were loud. And, and the guy was all in. A the showman. guy was all in. So they, I forget they do this at a Japanese uh, steakhouse. Mm. They they shoot sake into your mouth. That's yes. one of their. Mm -hmm. And for the kids, they have like a little lemonade concoction. Yes. Right. So he says, "Oh, it's your birthday, lemonade," mm. and he puts the 
uh, lemonade concoction in Michael's mouth, and he's squirting, and he's squirting. And I notice, I mean, early on, Michael's just got his mouth open, and he's not <laughs> swallowing. Oh, no, and no, no, And so no, he's no, no. squirting, and he's squirting, yeah. and he's squirting, and then Michael just goes like this. God. <laughs> and it just cascades out of his mouth onto the table. But hilarious. And then this lady, uh, one of the servers in the back, came out, towel, almost oh, they've in seen one, it before. They've almost seen it before. in one yeah. motion, this puts kid, the new plate down and bingo yeah. bango. Yeah, they yeah. do it all the time. But it was it was just it was so much. Did fun. Did you have there some was, sake? Sake? No, no. I I said no to the sake. I didn't yeah. say no to anything else. But I was having me a uh, Sapporo, That's, a big, a uh, big silver bullet of Sapporo. So when they are ice cold, Sapporo is a great it's beer. Delish with that meal. Uh, and just I used fantastic. to know. I was like, so it was great. <laughs> uh, and then I'll, I'll, later on in the show, maybe I'll get to the uh, the idea of his uh, his disappointment. Yeah, where he got a lot of clothes. And I understand. Not like total Ralphie, uh, you know, wearing the bunny costume, but it was a wonderful experience. What the? Oh, you're playing like when they get real heavy. Toro, Toro, Toro. I fear we have awakened a sleeping giant and filled him with a terrible resolve. Filled him with lemonade. I remember stuff. Beautiful. I I remember that. Do you feel like uh, that motif is still viable for families? Did you have a good experience? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. Okay. It was fun. And when you don't go for a while, fun. The food's good. Yeah. And, the food uh, is and it's good. fun. And I like catching uh, broccoli in my mouth. Yeah. I, I love it. Did and you by do the, the way, volcano? To- totally. It has to do the, the best. volcano. I've done it forever. Best. I love yeah. it. It was really wonderful. And then, uh, by the way, uh, a little addition some of the guys, the real comedians yes. at Japanese steakhouses, uh, bring out the, uh, the little peeing. Yes. Toy yeah, 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 with the water yeah, yeah, yeah. that yes. puts out the uh, the volcano and just yeah. hilarity ensued. <laughs> that one we have you know, one in Le- see- we have one in Leesburg that they they do something like that, but they don't have a toy. Right, they, they just actually- have a person urinate <laughs> yes, on the uh, volcano. Yes, they do. That is I think a, it well, was it's the adults only. Son. Yeah. No kids there. <laughs> um, but the you know to hear the nine year old and the soon to be nine year old who he was with. You know, with that joke as it pees on it, it's just like kids are just. It's <laughs> fun. Oh, it's great! Yeah. yeah. So it was wonderful, and you can cut loose and not worry about. I'm talking loud. Everybody's talking loud. Uh, Oli's having a fantastic time, and then uh, his friend Donnie. Yes. All the boys wanted was fried rice. Mm-hmm. Oh. They wanted fried rice, and they got this massive no portion chicken livers for them. Fri- nothing other than the fried fried rice. Fried rice. And I ordered. Uh, Carla ordered shrimp. Uh, Oli had shrimp and steak. I had shrimp and steak. Uh, and the guy, uh, I'm sitting there and the, the steak arrives Mm -hmm. and Donnie, who is, uh, Donnie doesn't have a filter when it comes to his, his tummy. He is a kid that if he wants something, he's going to let you know, he's completely relaxed. He's like family to us. He's been around us for a million years. So he said, and I am taking my first place. Says, can I have a piece of steak? And, uh, Carla immediately. And by the way, when That's you do the steak sweet. and shrimp, you know, it's sweet, but you get a limited portion of steak. And yeah, I'm like, finite. Uh, and uh, so I give him a piece of steak, but it's grudging, you know, because I just don't, you know, <laughs> you I don't like to eat. Share. I don't want to share anything with anyone. <laughs> I hate it. Carla wants a first bite of food every single time. Yeah. So Donnie says, Can I play that? I'm like, Okay, here you go. And then later, because I felt like I deserved pay, payback, mm-hmm. uh, they were doing the thing where they're throwing shrimp in their mouths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The little the little guys. Yeah. And I slide Donnie's lemonade or whatever their sprite or whatever the hell he was drinking. And I grab a big old forkful of his rice. Yeah. And what I didn't realize, Carla said, Come here, come here for a second. And it was videotaped because uh Gammy, grandma, was videotaping that as they were doing. And so you see me, you see me, I think we have I'll you know what? Tomorrow. I'll get a copy of it and I'll share it with you. And it, it it's it's as guilty as you can you possibly tell, tell Carla to relax because a rice for steak swap is definitely the advantage of the Well, this was who just so rice. sneaky the way I did it. And I, you know, and you see me just going like this, I'm going that <laughs> <laughs> and and I did it, it was uh, clandestine. So we gotta get to our talking head. Yes. Let's uh, do yes, that right uh, now. Uh it is Wednesday, which means it's time for a talking head, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our talking head today, his name. It's a very interesting last name. Daniel Tichi. Yes. Uh, Daniel of Cary, North Carolina, has been married for 25 years. 
His wife's name is Stacy. Uh, their son, Price, that's a great name, is a rising junior at Virginia Tech. Uh, what does that mean again? I always that ask you That means that he's a, between his sophomore and junior year. He'll be a junior. Uh, rising yeah. junior mm-hmm. at Virginia Tech. He has three. That's great to know that. Now I'll finally remember it. Mm-hmm. He has three dogs, Miracle, Bugsy, and Grace. Grace? <laughs> name the movie. Grace! Oh, God. Is it is it Matthew who says it? No. Oh, wait. I know what it is. Yep. It's Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, yes. you got, got it. it. Yes, you. you got it. Fantastic. That's the uh, receptionist yeah. for uh, uh, the pedophile. Yes. Anyway, uh, he is currently working in PR <laughs> for a software company. Uh, before that, he ran executive communications for another software firm where he encountered the likes of Peyton Manning, mm. Adam Savage from Mythbusters, <gasps> and uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin. Fantastic well, historian. Yeah. He found the show in 1997 and was drawn in trying to understand why Arnold Schwarzenegger would co-host a game show. Uh, Daniel is a TMOS podcast listener from day one and is a frequent letter writer. Took a lot of letter writing. Uh, He played competitive piano as a youth. In college, he sang with the Carolina Choir at UNC. They once performed for an audience of 50,000, including President Bill Clinton. Uh, Favorite TMOS moments, the Metro announcer, name Barry, and uh, Michael's boat, boat, boat face. (laughs) Boat, boat, boat. boat. What a great little yard. What a pretty little backdrop that is. Uh, Daniel was inspired to uh, be a talking head after hearing Reed Galen on our show. And uh, Mr. Tichy once printed a boarding pass for a noted presidential scholar. Intrigued? Uh, you should be. Now, here's Daniel. Daniel Tichi, hello. How are you? Hello, guys. How's it going? Great here. It's going great. And this is an honor. I I, I can't uh, can't believe I'm here. I'm just uh, I'm thrown, blown delighted. away. We are delighted to have you there. And uh, when I see out your window down there, it uh, it's strange. Sometimes somebody will have a backdrop from another part of the country, and it makes me kind of long for uh you know a different look Humidity. because when you're well, well when you're in florida it's like the you know it's the same thing all yeah, the time down here this, that, that, that could, could be, be florida that could be fairfax for all we know that, that's fairfax yeah. it could be but it but it, it, it doesn't look you florida greenery. Me, it's not like you're you know? in the desert i yeah. have lots of greenery you know what maybe i shouldn't have said that i mean i just, yeah. it does make me long for uh why am i talking about yeah, this we have a guest care. yeah we have a yeah. guest here is that a real background or are we talking about virtual that's real see you can uh touch there it is. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. And we can all watch uh, my uh, grass die behind us as it uh, <laughs> approaches 100 degrees day after day. How is uh, how is the weather in, uh, you know, the entire country is experiencing a dramatic uh, temperature rise. How are things in North Carolina? A traditionally warm place this time of year anyway. Yeah, I have co-workers in Europe, and uh, I can say this for the one of the few times. I'm glad I'm not in London or Paris. Yeah. Today, where it's you know over a hundred degrees there, still the uh, heat wave still continuing in uh, yeah, in London. And, and, and I and heard just, that in, know, in 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 London and most of Europe, the amount of people that have air conditioning is below twenty five percent. Oh, yeah, really? Mm. They wow. just uh, that's not that just culture. like in Maine. Yeah, mm-hmm. you yeah. never need same it. thing in Maine. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly uh, the same thing. So uh, let's see. You're currently working for a software company. Uh, you ran executive communications for another software firm, and how did you meet uh, some of these famous folks when you were working in software? You wouldn't exactly think that was a uh, line of work where you'd bump into celebrities. How did that come about? Like Peyton Manning. That's uh, I've yeah. always been interested. Well, the executive comms function is is different. I've, I've been a writer for software companies since 1997. Um, it's a different function in the fact that you're working with your executives on their internal and external messages. They had these big events. And usually for those big events to draw people in, they'll bring in celebrities like a Peyton Manning mm-hmm. or uh, a Doris Kearns Goodman. And so my job would be to work with our executives to either on a Q&A or do an intro. And I would work with typically not with the celebrity themselves, but their people to make sure there's a seamless handoff. And with Peyton, it was interesting. I'd been on this in this new role for about three weeks the person who had worked with him on my team was sick. And so I had to show up that day and sort of take over. Um, and Peyton shows up, he's all business, you know, um, he's there to get his check. He's polite, but he's not, you know, effusive. He's, he comes out with our CMO and they walk around the stage and they come back and our head of marketing pulls out a piece of paper. And I know it's the script. It's a Q and a, and Peyton's like, all right, let's sit down and talk about it. So he goes, 
question by question. And he knows every, hey, Peyton knows every answer that he's going to answer and, and how he's going to deliver it. He does this. And, and it's going to be billed as a, uh, up on a stage, kind of a Q and A, yep. uh, like a with showcase. a level of yeah. a level yeah. of spontaneity, uh, spontaneity. That, but he knows they're like, they're rehearsing like it show. basically, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so like a pre-interview. I, so I I see that happening, and they sit down at these little tables in the green room, and I um I sit down, and I'm not introduced. I'm just you know some hanger on that's there, and we start going through the thing, and then at one point Peyton said, uh, if I answer, if I say david cutcliffe in this question that means i've already answered the next one so just had the prompter move down and answer you know skip one wow and and i write that in there because he knows most of the times he'll he'll mention his former coach but sometimes he wouldn't right so i i tried i had to bite my tongue because i wanted to say so you want me to call an audible there peyton and uh i could have <laughs> lost then that they, job then they never would have introduced you ever exactly they, they so yeah <laughs> no, schmucky mcgee here doesn't get uh any any credit there <laughs> But, Schmucky uh, McGee, there you go. So, I love that. So You're so subtle about it. I go back with the, with the prompter, and I and I'm listening as intently as I've ever listened to anything. And when it's over with, it's like a 45 minute session. I am just a puddle of flop sweat because <laughs> again, I, it's my first thing. Um, and it was, but it was a really cool gig. It just, uh, as I was telling Rob yesterday, during COVID, trying to you know, to keep companies moving forward, you have to communicate. And the executives were under a lot of pressure. We were under a lot of pressure. And in, in, in my 25 years, it's the only time I really felt burned out. I couldn't do it anymore. But, you know, um, I was on the phone with Doris Kearns Goodwin. We were doing a video call during COVID uh, promoting this event. I bet and she's it, a class act. Tell me I'm right she, about that. She's very, and she's very polite, very nice. Uh, right. I heard we were, very foul mouth. <laughs> yes, just Bell like knows. a sailor. Yeah. Was horrible. Yeah. Um, Where's she, uh, my effing Danish? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Doris. <Yeah. laughs> she was, uh, it was a day before they called the 2020 presidential election. Mm. And so you have downtime when you're setting up shots and, and everything like that. And we were just asking her what she felt like was going to happen. And all that, I think it was that Friday. She thought that they were going to call it either later that day or that, that, and she said it was, it's basically a done deal. They're just being very, um, particular and very circumspect about getting the re the results in and getting in the right. What, is, what so election really, are we talking about? Twenty twenty. The presidential election. Biden the presidential Trump. of twenty. Oh, yeah. by, by, uh, the most recent one. Okay, yeah. I was just yeah. I, I missed that. Yeah. All right. Uh, she is uh, is some you know for people that don't know uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin is a uh, really focuses on the presidency a presidential historian uh, and uh, you know just knows her stuff backwards and and, and forwards and incredibly brilliant. Uh, and it, you know, w getting back to Peyton Manning, I would say when you talk about very businesslike, not effusive, uh, yeah, I met him once briefly, uh, and that was kind of the, I think when you achieve that level of celebrity, unfortunately you have to just put sort of a protective cone around yeah. you, you know, but at the same time, you know, there are people, there are exceptions to that rule. You know, uh, I just can't imagine that level of uh, of notoriety it, because, I mean, it's one thing to be a superstar athlete. You will already go into that rarefied air. Then you go into the fact that he's a household name and then you throw the television exposure and the Q rating and all that, uh, you know. But one of the things and this is a friend of Rob's and uh, uh, not a friend of mine, but a friend of Rob's who once uh, encountered Mike Messina, a Baltimore Orioles pitcher. <laughs> Uh, at Memorial Stadium, or I think it might have been Camden Yards. It was, I believe. And, yeah. uh, and uh, he was being, I would say, businesslike, yes. non-effusive. And uh, and Cannon leaned over and said, hey, Mike Messina, it's nice to be important, <laughs> but it's more important to be nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that, you know, so Peyton, take note of that. Uh, Daniel Tichy appears to be a very kind, nice man. Yes. Who probably wouldn't do anything, but don't be a dick. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Peyton. just uh, wanted to uh, share that. Uh, and that goes and, for uh, Archie too. Yeah. <laughs> now you've got Doris Kearns Goodwin, and then you've got uh, you printed a boarding pass for a noted presidential scholar. That's almost connective tissue there, but it's another person that we're talking about person. here. That is a, it's the same conference, I believe, because they kind of bled in. We did two or three a year. Uh, as Peyton Manning, uh, that's where we I met Adam Savage, who, by the way, 
nicest celebrity I've is ever met. Is he the met. guy with the big mustache? Uh, no, he was the other one. The He's other the other one. guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, Adam, right. Adam talked to me for 15 minutes uh, about my son, who at the time was about 14 and was... He was telling him, go to this college of mines and they'll just take to they'll give you classes on how to blow stuff up. That's all he you know, <laughs> that's all he wanted. To do. <laughs> it's exactly what that. you wanted him to be. That's which was great. Uh, isn't that great? It's such a cool. satisfying it's the same thing with what we do for a living. Yeah. When you meet somebody who is what you want them to be, the greatest example that I can give you is a uh, uh, somebody that's uh, you know no longer in the public eye on a regular basis. John Madden, mm -hmm. who is you know Madden was just exactly like the analyst on NFL. It was so exciting uh, to get that. You want that, yeah. and unfortunately, a lot of people don't give you that. But tell me about the boarding pass. So uh, John Meacham was also at that uh, that event, mm -hmm. and oh, um, another person, so I love. cool, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we're at this table, same place I sat with uh, Peyton Manning, and it's just one of those things. Like I just can't believe that you know this little kid from a hick small town in eastern north carolina gets to do these things but he sits down and we're just chatting and it's 20 i think it's 2018 so politics are very much on fire and oh, yeah. if you're going to talk to a john meacham um that's the time to do it and um, at some point he's on his laptop and he said can i print out my boarding pass and i said yeah that we have a printer back here and Long story short, he emailed me his boarding pass. I printed it and handed it to him. And, you know, that's 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 my contribution to society. He was able to get on the plane. <laughs> and yeah. presidential he, history. Yeah. 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 Yes, now, exactly. was he willing? Uh, because now, you know, with the Doris Kearns good, I've seen her and I would say, oh, that's going to be so with a John Meacham as much as I am a ma I mean, a massive fan i would fan out over him i would geek out as our friend uh bdk used to say kevin mccarthy rather i i swear to god i just i'm such a fan of the guy but i could also see him going either way was he someone who engaged you in political discourse uh or was he uh also businesslike which is a great yeah, well, way to we, put it yeah in a business setting you're not going to get too deep into it but you know there, i can't even remember what issues were happening but it was the trump era so there was something happening right. i'm sure at that time and um he commented on it and, and and you know but he's playing the room he doesn't know where who who you know the politics yeah, you gotta be careful. There. Yeah, yeah. right but uh right. you know he would he would just and then also just idle chit chat and you know just How's the conference going? And you know how. So nothing real heavy, uh, right? Mike, he I can tell you that he's a nice guy. I don't mean, mean to steal him. You've met uh, you've met well, John Meacham. We had John Meacham on All the Best, which is um, the Georgia Barbara Bush podcast. Perfect guest uh, for that. Show. And uh, you know, Legacy of Service. And uh, I believe he was on Health Gig too. Yeah, he was he? on Health yeah, Gig as well. Fascinating, and, cool guy. Yeah. And what I love is that he took the time prior to the interview to say, guys. Do we have a few minutes here? Because I'm hangry. I got to get a sandwich in me. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. And uh, not only, uh, you know, regular uh, appearances all over television, oh, yeah. but a, a, a professor. Noted. Uh, a, and and he, uh, eulogized George H.W. Bush. Mm -hmm. That's remember. right. Absolutely. Yep. I want to ask you about competitive. It said you played competitive piano, Daniel, as a youth. Now, mm -hmm. is that someone who goes to re the piano uh, bars? what are they called? The, the, the competitions where... I mean, they've made movies about that. Uh, were you a high-level pianist? Yeah. Not my tempo. <laughs> yeah. <no>. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> so I got I got into it at the age of eight. Um, my sister played as well. Uh, she probably started a year before that. Uh, anyway, but it, it was it was something I did. Uh, I, I had a natural ability, somewhat, but it was one of those things. Again, if you're in a small town. Uh, and you're a good piano player there. And then you go to a, a big town and see some kid who like I practice 45 minutes a day. Mm. Um, you go see these other kids who are truly exceptionally gifted um, that practice hours at a time. And oh you're like, God. whoa, this is this. But I was able to hold my own. I would I would go to competitions uh, up until I was 18. Um, oh, wow. And, uh, that, you know, the reason I kind of put that on there was, you know, with Michael getting started on it, there's. Um, it's an interesting thing. My son got into piano, uh, but it never really caught with him. It, he just, he never really found, uh, that yearning to get better that I always had. And my parents let me decide at 14 or 15, do you want to quit? Well, you've done a lot. So how long did you, uh, did you study? How long, uh, ten years. when did you start? Uh, eight. And then I stopped at 18. Cause he, uh, you know, it hasn't caught fire with him. Uh, 
he seems to, and the difference between somebody who wants to get better and somebody who just is doing it, not totally grudgingly, but certainly not willingly all the time, uh, it's a slow slog. And I was thinking, uh, you know, of, well, really, you know, I was thinking of actually being, getting involved with uh, the instruction more than I have. You know, I, I don't know whether I'm going to do that or not, but it's, uh, he's really, he's not as into it as I, I would have. What's the best approach? Yeah, I'm just curious if it is there, you know, mm-hmm. unlike, uh, you know, with golf, is there anything I could do that would get him motivated, that would get him going? Well, I, I mean, my, <laughs> the approach for me was I didn't have a choice uh, <laughs> till I was 14. Um, and then I was given a choice. Do I want to keep going? And at that point, I had so much skin in the game. And I really wanted to see um, how much I could get better. You get these, uh, you can get a social diploma in high school music. Um, I knew I was learning a lot about theory and um, different parts of, of music that I felt would be helpful. And it was, I mean, there, you know, when I got to college and I was having to take all these arts and sciences courses, I would take a music class and get an A essentially with my eyes closed because I had a background in music. And so that gave me like nine hours of credit. Uh, was it worth it? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I I understand music at a different level now, but to get to, get to your point, you know, it, I just didn't have an option. You know, I was going to play piano. That yeah. that was all there was to it. And then at some point I was like, let's just gut it out, get through high school and, and, okay. and I get, get everything I, else out I, of it. And within his case, he's, uh, you know, you, you were 45 minutes a day. He's 45 seconds a day. And I think we oh, can improve yeah. on yeah, that. Yeah, but a solid really 45. Of course, yeah. yeah it's absolutely. Wall to wall. I think we could do I that. I have a question, And I've Daniel. been looking to try to play on my board the farmer's insurance thing. I was going to do a Terrence Fletcher, but no, because I don't prepare my studio properly each and every day. That's the way that goes. And it's not playing. It's not playing. It's not. Uh, listen, we're out of time. We need you to say hello <laughs> to... Uh, I was really going to do that. It's I like, know. What's going I know. Can Rob get his question Fletcher? just briefly, please? Yes, go ahead. And I'll try I'm, to I'm do curious, this. Why, you know, Damn obviously you, you left piano. Two, two-parter, quick. Do you find, <laughs> ah, did you find that uh, mathematically minded people are better at piano? Because I hear that great question. a lot of mathematics transfers to music. And also, do you still have a piano in your home? I, I do have a piano in my home. And as far as mathematics and the people I saw, uh, my sister has a PhD in math and, and mathematics. Oh, so wow. I have a degree in journalism, so it worked half halfway for us. But are I, you a math I, guy at all? I can do math in my head, which is kind of odd for someone who has my background. Sure. Um, so I was good at math. I just hated it. Um, and then, uh, I have run into, especially in software, so many engineers, mm-hmm. analysts, people who had that sort of mentality. And a lot of them are really great musicians. So I, I think there is a tie there. Yeah. Well, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> There you go. That's how long it took me to do that, you know. Uh, Michael, that's just not quite my tempo. All right, please. Could you just do that, please? Thank you. Damn it. Uh, uh, is there anybody you'd like to say hello to, Daniel, before we let you go? I just say say hi to my wife and son. We introduced him earlier. My parents, my sister. Uh, I know the uh, Latonia family, who um, uh, Rob knows, part of his, um, supper, his club. supper club, or, or, or close friends of the family. So I, I kind of have an end there. And then everybody in TMOS Nation, I, I appreciate all the chatter on all the different Facebook groups. I'm not a big participant, but I'm a lurker, and and you guys make me smile on the on a daily basis. Aww, thank that's you awesome. So much. We appreciate it. that's thank Daniel you. Tichy, Everybody, always fascinating to speak to somebody who's smarter than we are. You obviously are. We'll take a break, and uh, we will come back with more. Uh, I love the Talking Head segments. I truly do. It's it's always a delight. Uh, we've got the homepage coming up next, and uh, I don't know why that took me so long to uh, find, but at least Worth it. I try to stop it, and it plays twice. We'll be right back. Pittsburgh has a favorite burger, and now the Steel City has a favorite chip. Introducing Amato Chips. Yes, uh, run by the uh, the famous Amato family. We use only the freshest potatoes, straight from Countersport, Pennsylvania's Potato City. The best thing to happen to the potato chip since the deep fryer. It has an unmistakable crunch that keeps you coming back for more. And it's the perfect companion to an Amato burger that you can top with Pittsburgh sauce. Yeah. Charred on the outside, tender on the inside. <laughs> and where can you find Jim Chips? You can find it at Walmart, Target. Buy a bag or a dozen by clicking the shopping center banner at MikeOmerishShow.com. If it says Amato, you know it's fresh. <laughs> <Gross>. <laughs> 
I love those yeah. boys. Thank you. Keep them coming. This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Stamps.com. When you are running a small business, every second counts. So let me ask you this. Why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using Stamps.com instead? Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. For more than 20 years, Stamps.com has been a must for over 1 million businesses. Stamps.com gives you access to all the shipping services you need, plus exclusive discounts like up to 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. All you need is a computer, a standard printer, and you're up and running in minutes. Printing official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send it. Plus, Stamps.com works seamlessly with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. Whatever you're doing, Stamps.com is your mailing and shipping solution. Here's what I want you to do. Stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code TMOS for a special offer, a four-week trial, free postage, and a digital scale, and no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter the code TMOS. And we thank you, Stamps.com, for your longtime support yeah. of the Mike O'Mara Show. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage. Uh, and this was interesting to me because I watched a documentary of uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Making of the Godfather with Jimmy Kahn passing recently. Yeah. Uh, the estate, Vito's estate, the Corleone estate from The Godfather, is going up for rent on Airbnb. This is the house that they had the wedding in the first scene, right? I think this is the one. Uh, no, I think that's in Tahoe. I oh, okay. really do. All right. I think this is the one in New York. In where Long Island. Uh, when they when they say uh, hello Carlo, oh, okay. and then they 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 whack Carlo <laughs> right with the garrot in yeah. the uh, yeah not not that I'm a Godfather official no not at, but, at all not at all uh, let's see first uh, we should clarify the house was only used for exterior yes. shots and it's in Staten Island yes okay. uh, unfortunately it's only being offered once and you have to take it for a full month <laughs> from August first through the thirty first a month. Okay. We, well, here's the deal. We're going on vacation uh, in the month of August, and we'll put it up on Airbnb. Uh, Mike, it's cheap. Yeah. 50 bucks a night. That's not bad. Staten you know? Island. First, let's clarify. Not Long Island. Second, did you know that home and the homeowner did not want to use, did not want to rent their home out for the, the movie? movie? Yeah, initially. Yeah, because nobody knew the movie was going to be the movie. Nobody knew. You know? I understand you got- that uh, you wanted to stay for a week, but no, we're going to need you for a whole it. month. Uh, hold on. Man. <laughs> also, he was Italian American, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. So the he, owner? Didn't, he didn't want the his owner home, was Italian? He didn't want right. his home associated with the movie. Wow, that wild. Well, That's well, pretty cool. Well, Mike is uh, prepping to do. Brando. Everything's hard today for some reason. Well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Good video day. <laughs> look! Look how they massacre my boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can be like a man. Hey, can I rent your house? No, I don't. At fifty dollars a night, you have to go August first to the thirty first. Are you guys are that like nineteen forties prices, Vito? It's a deal. It's a bargain. If you were uh, if you were a um, a podcast that was about the Godfather, that'd be a deal. Yeah, you'd go to your a, do your show from there. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice. It's a nice price. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh oh. What else is in Staten Island? The uh, Wu Tang Clan. Yeah. Pete Davidson. Pete Davidson. I yeah. believe Colin Jost. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Did we lose him? Do we lose Vito? We can't hear you. We can't hear you, Vito. Oh, Dom. Dom. All nothing is working. No, nothing every, everything's, everything's working. hard. Everything. Nothing's hard. working. So my understanding, uh, and I know this. Now, can yes, you hear me? Yeah, now? Can, now. can hear you now. Yes. Can we get an engineer down here to help me? I need help. Pony, buy an airline ticket. I sweat. I said an engineer, not a moron. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That it was, was just his uh, birthday. That was terrific. Uh, I said that. Did I, Pony, did I not say? Let me do Everything's hard today. It was a good joke. It was a good uh, joke. I appreciate uh, it. Did you, like, did you like your greet? Did you get my greeting? I did. You're a wonderful man, Mike. Thank you very much. Oh, that was hey. sweet. I didn't know hey. that happened. Wow. Yeah, I sent a happy. Did you send a happy birthday? No, I didn't know. I didn't know it was birthday. I didn't know it was his birthday at all. It was his birthday two days ago. Yeah, 
I sent a know? picture of Mr. Sardonicus from the uh, from the William Castle movie. I said, "Smile real big." <laughs> so okay, you did a better job than there we are. Yep, you did a better job than I did greeting him on his. I birthday. did nothing. Congratulations. <laughs> well, no, yours carries a certain. No, weight, that's though. where your ego is unrepressible. It's uh, it's uh, you did. I know you were much more thoughtful. I said, "Happy, have a happy, happy, happy." Right? Is that what I said? Did I my traditional have a happy, happy? Yes, and it was wonderful, Mike, and I think it you. was not yeah. wonderful. Rob's no, but was from you, creative the gravitas, and thoughtful. The gravitas. And, yeah. and mine was uh, terrible. Anyway, <laughs> Vito <laughs> is uh, offering up uh, his house. No, he's not. He's dead. Fifty dollars a night, fifteen hundred. Got to go the whole month though. Yeah. So that's the duration, fifteen hundred dollars. But it depends. I don't know what the neighborhood is. Do you want to spend a month uh, in New York? That's uh, the problem. You know, in the summer. Yeah. In well, August? I understand if you stay there for a full month, you're allowed to bang cocktail waitresses two at a time. <laughs> That's Fredo. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> I'm smart. Bang. He was banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. Who are Come you? Come on. <laughs> uh, do you know me? I'm Mo Green. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm going to get shot in the eye. <laughs> the chain smokers. Does anybody know the chain yeah, smokers? Very familiar. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are going to be the first musicians to perform on the edge of Spree. Oh. Uh, in 2024, a private company called Worldview will send Ooh. them into the stratosphere about 23 miles above Earth. Uh, to put it into perspective, space begins at about 62 miles. Uh, the Worldview CEO asked them to take part in one of the first flights because his son is a fan. A Worldview flight costs $50,000, which is far less than a Jeff Bezos Blue Origin flight for $28 million. Uh, but you're not exactly going into space. Yeah. Did well, they, then why? Did they put them in coach? Mike, it's, it's, we were all Mike. enamored by that Red Bull guy that fell out of that capsule. Yeah. That, you mean the guy that jumped? Yeah. yeah. That was cool. That's cool. I would, I'd want to see that. You know, he'll be That'd landing be cool. on Earth in another two days. <laughs> Passengers are sent in a pressurized capsule connected to a uh, balloon. Pressurized what? Capsule. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it's a balloon and it's 50 Just grand. Just like the Red Bull guy. Yeah, it's yeah, a balloon. There's a bargain. Yeah. yeah. That's pay 50 grand for that. A balloon idiots. ride. <laughs> Justin Bieber's face seems to be working again. Uh, because he's going back on tour. Last month, he was diagnosed with something called Ramsey Hunt Syndrome. <laughs> Owen! <laughs> Ann That's Ramsey. a real callback to an old bit. Oscar, uh, any that, idea? Oh, throw mama from the train. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Good job. It, it <laughs> caused half his face to become paralyzed. Uh, he announced yesterday that his Justice World Tour starts up again on the 31st at a festival in Italy. I guess that's July 31st. Why not nope. his face a move? <laughs> hey, what's that? The half his face to go to sleep. <laughs> he's just such a talented boy, but his, he's got a sleepy side of Did his you face. Not, he's <laughs> only smiling on the one side. Didn't you feel like it was going to be months until you saw... His fan of the a fan of the opera. If I can give you a bit of information, I probably did not spend a lot of time thinking it, about his it. face. <laughs> uh, no word yet on the U.S. dates uh, that he had to postpone, and when they'll be rescheduled, we don't know, but we can hope. If you need the hope. information, just call Maddie Massiello. She'll yes, know. Yeah. yes, Maddie Massiello. There's Big a fan. reference Big to somebody who used to work with us. Big fan. Who, who uh, we are dead was competent. Yeah. We are dead to her. Oh, well, yes, she's now. with the New York Times now. Yeah, she, well, the old she's, gray Does lady. she reach out ever? She reached out. Yeah. Oh, she does. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, I mean, you, you really didn't interact. I didn't. Well, I don't interact with yeah, anybody, yeah. so I have to rely yeah, on you. Yeah, I thought yeah. she. I thought she had like shut us out. No, you no, made no, references no. to it a couple no, of no, times. No, no. Uh, okay. Very no. good. Uh, it's the anniversary of the first moon landing. Neil Armstrong said his famous one giant leap for mankind line fifty three years ago today. Wow. Mike, and I, I remember, was going to use. It, I was going to use it in the audio. Vault. I was going to say, I know where you were fifty three years ago. You were in, in Maine. Maine. Yeah, on a bad black and white TV, watching it, desperately yeah. trying to get a signal, and it was tough. I was July twentieth. Can I play Cronkite? Yeah, go ahead. It's so July. Great. Let me give it the dates important. first. Yeah. July twentieth, nineteen sixty nine, uh, and uh, the question is, do you think we'll be living on the moon? I think at some point we will be living on. Uh, other planets. I think it's inevitable, but uh, you've got the uh, the moon landing yeah, this from is, this is 69. So cool. This is so cool because you never see Cronkite like lose any sort of composure. There's another note. Could you give some context about your parents? Uh, uh, their anniversary? Oh yeah, this made me realize with the with the moon landing, 
that if my parents had stayed married, that next month they would be 52 years married. Oh, wow. Which is wow. incredible if you think about it. Does that give you a sad? No. I mean, I still have them. They're still both very happy, but it's just- okay. they're it's, apart. It's funny. It's just so funny to think of Grandpa Bob celebrating his golden wedding anniversary. And by the way, for people that don't know, Rob is a product of a broken mm-hmm. home. Yes, exactly. And uh, what happened was uh, Sharon gave birth. Rob yeah. was in the crib. She they shot. both went into the nursery together, and uh, there he was in the bassinet. And, uh, you know, Condo Bob looked down at the baby and uh, looked at Sharon and said, well- Look at him. We can't possibly stay together. That's right. And after she did all that work, the first sound I heard as a child, Mike, was a revving automobile. (laughs) As he squealed out of the parking lot. All right. Let's go to the Tiffany Network, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Here's Walter Cronkite. The lunar module cutting itself free from the command module, beginning the maneuvers which should place it on the surface of the moon. Roger, Eagle, Sun, God. Roger, how does it look? The Eagle has wings. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. Roger, understand. Go for landing. City feet, two and a half down. We're drifting to the right a little. 30 seconds. Oh, jeez. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. We're home. <laughs> Man on the moon. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. There he is. There's a foot coming down the step. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. Armstrong is on the moon. Yeah, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That is enough to make me My a little verklempt. God. Can and you, yeah. If you really want to understand the power of a news broadcast in that era, watch two things. Watch that. But then before that, watch Cronkite announcing the death of President Kennedy. Both the, times that he got uh, Both times that he got emotion. self-overcome. Yeah. And it's so amazing because Kennedy promised to put a man on the moon. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. did. And yeah. it's, just, it's cool. such a wonderful may, time for America. May I just add one thing? Yeah. And what was going through my mind, because this is, you know, I'm a space guy. Yeah. Is that at 38, Neil Armstrong made it to the moon. But at 38, Mr. Ponyboy Matt Bloom can't even make it to Japan. That's right. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And also, starting in 1969, mm-hmm. right after the moon landing, mm-hmm. yeah. America completely f***ed off for yeah. every year yeah. after that. How well, dare you? Hoax. Yeah, How dare it. you? Uh, now I have a little something, something for <laughs> you. you. Uh, and this is one of those three joke kickers. <laughs> oh, I, I love here we this. Three. Okay, here we go. This shows three extra. jokety jokes You weren't for you. effing off when you wrote no, this. No, no, no. I was doing my work. Uh, <laughs> a new poll finds nearly four in 10 young adults in Britain brush their teeth less than once a week. That's Let gross. that land for That's a minute. The gross. survey conducted by dental accounting <laughs> company Hive <laughs> found that 39% of adults between 25 and 34 go a whole week without cleaning their teeth. Over 30% of respondents admit that they often just forget. Researchers note that their findings confirm the theory that many people often overlook their dental health when they're focusing on other health issues. Uh, Younger adults aren't the only ones slacking off when it comes to this. The poll found 36% of adults between 35 and 44 have never, ever used mouthwash. This is Britain. This is in Britain. (laughs) The survey also revealed that uh, people have shared their toothbrush with another person at least once. And the same number add that they actually share their brush with someone in their home. This is in Britain on a daily basis. Wow. Yeah. All right. So uh, time for your three jokes. Here they uh, come, Oscar. Tally ho, right. ass breath people. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> hey, Downton Abbey. More like Downton Abscess. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that oh, might no. have been your closer. <laughs> What's all the commotion about, said one of Ricky Gervais' dog team. (laughs) This will have no effect on the upcoming London sock chewing festival (laughs) that they're having. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week, ladies and gentlemen. We got to take a break. uh, Baby Spice. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) One more. Uh, Uh, We'll be right back. You're listening to the Mike O'Mara Show. More fun coming up, everybody. Romeo and Juliet. Antony and Cleopatra, Bogey and Bacall, 
Add to that list another one of the world's greatest love stories. Mike and Carlo O'Mara. Their love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Their love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. And nowhere is that love story more on display than the Mike O'Mara bonus show. Yes, fall in love with love again and again with a Mike O'Mara bonus show subscription. Lovingly tap the banner at MikeO'MaraShow.com and order the TMOS bonus show today. You'll love it, just like Carla loves Mike. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Best Fiends. Do you ever feel like you're unsatisfied with what you have? You want more. More is better. More is fun. More is the best thing to have. So, dear friends, why be content? Best Fiends always satisfies your need for more. More puzzles, more fun. The more you play, the more characters you collect. And new characters and challenging puzzles are added all the time. Plus, there are tons of fun events where you can win huge in-game rewards. With thousands of levels, you literally can play as long as you want and never get bored. And once you download Best Fiends, you can play anywhere, even without an internet connection. Yes. Here's a quote from one of their biggest fans. Rob Spiewak writes, I love Best Fiends so much that I no longer touch either lemonade or... Or vodka. This is true. But ironically, Mike, <laughs> I'm on level 60, uh, 6206, which is called Lemon Busters. Ooh. And wow. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like we have like, the same know, brain on yeah. that. So you got to get 12 lemons, 100 strawberries, and of course, Mike, five slugs. How many vodkas? None vodkas. Zero. Okay, vodkas. very good. Uh, download Best Fiends free from the App Store or Google Play. Plus, earn even more with $5 worth of in game rewards when you reach level five. That's all level five. Yeah. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. I wanted to talk to Oscar yesterday about this whole uh, all star thing. I'm getting a haircut today, and on the uh, TV screen, they got the S Pen on, and the S Pen has a poll question Do you care? about the all-star game and it's funny out loud even though the barber the lady that was cutting my hair she didn't care but i had to volunteer i don't i don't at all did you phone, i don't did care you phone, one little bit did you phone them in bristol to tell them as much yeah mike o'mara here <laughs> don't care don't cover it not important to me uh but you were talking about watching the home run derby the other night which is part of the festivities yes. and you had some issues that i have no idea what they are yeah. with the uh with the coverage yeah, well, um, as you know, ESPN is a uh, is a partner of Podville Media, a mm-hmm. uh, broadcast partner, and I wanted to get your take and your thoughts on the idea that they were promoting uh, what was the Derek Jeter documentary, much like The Last Dance for Michael Jordan, if you've uh, seen that. Yeah, and ESPN has done uh, amazing work with mm-hmm. these documentaries, these athletes' uh, yeah. documentaries with the Thirty for uh, Thirty, and they've done it forever, they're just, just just great. Get me Liv Schreiber on the phone. We got another documentary coming up here. The only guy that does the narrations. Damn it. So, we, we <laughs> my nephew and I, uh, he's, yeah, he's interning and he's a big sports fan. He said, Tio Oscar, can we watch that documentary? I said, what time is it? He goes, it's at 10 p.m. So that means we're in bed by 11. I'm staying in Olney as we speak because I've got to drive him into work, etc. So this is after the home run derby. They're going to roll the, uh, the, the, the Derek Jeter yes. thing. Yeah. Ask me what time the Derek Jeter, the first part of Six Parts documentary, hit the airwaves. Six Parts? Yes. What time? What time did it come on? 11.10 p.m. That's way Derby. off, Mike, that's way off the Jeter meter. <laughs> the Derby lasted a little longer than it should have? An hour. Now, yeah. mm-hmm. you and I both know that the Home Run Derby, for some time, when you're a kid, you want to see that. Yeah. As you get an adult, become a real sports fan, you're like, eh, I don't, I, this it's is manufactured. A, it's a manufactured it's for fine. television event. Yeah. You're they've okay. wrecked it. They, look, they busy it up. They they put too much crap in it. And for years and years, I, as the much back, as there were some, yeah, there were some things oh, that, that I liked, yeah. but, but it was so repetitive. I get and, it. You know, the, by the way, what if watching them hit home pitch, runs is a big deal. What if every sixth pitch was a water balloon? <laughs> See now I'm watching. So very good, so, yes, or, Mr. Or, Sports, or a gender reveal. Um, so I, <laughs> I, I sit there and I'm like, okay, I'm a fan of ESPN. Our friend Dominique Foxworth works yeah. at ESPN. We do business with ESPN. Fine. Is this a, a genius 
a, like a marketing stroke of genius that they they know that home run derby never ends on time, mm-hmm. and they're promoting for three weeks this cheater, uh, you know, by the producers of the Last Dance documentary, and you sit there. And you're like, all right, fine. Juan Soto, Washington National. Yeah. Didn't take the $400 plus million. He's going to go to the Yankees. We talked about that earlier. Uh, has that been approved, Mike? I don't know if that deal. No, uh, okay. still, a rumor, 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 still a rumor. Still a rumor. rumor. There are a bunch of noise from other players yeah. on the Yankees saying we'd love to get Juan Soto to come. Of course they want yeah. him. He's yeah. the best hitter in baseball. So That's what they want. I, uh, I sit there and I look at my nephew. I said, this, remember this time. I was like, I bet you they knew. They knew that it wasn't going to be done by 10 p.m. On the actual coverage of the Home Run Derby, did they continually remind you that the Jeter documentary is going to follow the Home Run Derby? Yes. Then it is a marketing ploy. How was episode one? Because uh, I know you, Stamp, you're a night owl, yes. and yeah. uh, I'm yeah. sure Luke is going into yeah. that age now where kids become totally oh. nocturnal. Oh, yeah. My daughter's never given it up. She even uh, She's nocturnal now out in L.A., mm-hmm. so I basically have no contact with her because in order for me to reach her, I would be talking yeah. to her right now and saying... Good morning to you. <laughs> Good morning. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Carrie is like that. She sleeps during the day and the night. <laughs> we exciting. stayed up. Very great. We so stayed. she's recovering. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. We Fine. watched it. <laughs> Worth yeah. it. Worth it? Yeah, it's worth it. It's good. Compelling. Six co- episodes. I'm not sure whether uh, six episodes would be uh, something I could hang with, though. Compelling. I'm not sure. Compelling because uh, you'll, you'll love the baseball, inside baseball, how they found Jeter, why he wasn't on on other people's boards, but what, it, like it's he was homeless, it, wasn't he? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you're the worst. <laughs> He's <be>. Mr. Sports. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta take a break. We'll come back with more after this. <laughs> It's your boys, Twitch and Amato. Have you seen TMOS on TikTok? It's tiny, delicious, bite-sized morsels from the boys at the Michael Maris Show. That's freaking unbelievable. TMOS on TikTok. It's hotter than a deep-fried calzone for Luigi's on Fifth Avenue in Brooklyn. Oh! And now I'm off to the All You Can Eat Kiss concert. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Cornerstone. Did you know that uh, only a quarter of all mortgages are handled by banks? Did you mm. know that? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Uh, the other 75% are done through mortgage companies. So if you or anyone you know are buying a home and looking to take out a mortgage, listen up. The mortgage lender you work with is the most important element in your home purchase. My good friend Mark Livingstone and his team at Cornerstone First Financial are the only experts I recommend for all your mortgage needs. They offer more products and close more loans faster than the large banks do. Make Cornerstone First your go-to for your home search. Their years of experience, customer service, and low-rate guarantee mean you'll be glad you did. For any purchase or refinance, call the people at Cornerstone First Financial today. One of the longest-running advertisers on our show. Call Cornerstone First Financial, 202-625-1221. That's 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Thank you, Cornerstone First Financial. We appreciate the biz on the Mike O'Mara Show. I just wanted to say we're running out of time. Uh, We spent a long time in the first segment. Segment today, but uh, Mrs. O'Mara will be very happy with me because one of my early morning projects today was cleaning out. I mean, a deep dive on my closet. And Rob was asking me before, well, did you find different sizes? No, I'm not Jackie Gleason. No, I have okay. uh, I have not uh, fluctuated dramatically uh, over 20 years. Because I just kind of been I fat. just had to get rid of a lot of clothes because of You've that very reason. You've yeah. lost 10 inches yeah. on your waist. Yeah, that would be about everything. What I mean, what is it like? What's yeah, that? You, did you were like a 52 just... at one point, right? What was that? You were a 52 belt. No. Uh, 48 plus two. I was a 50. 50. Yeah. So I've gone. I'm down to a 36 now on my waist. So you've lost twelve inches around you. Yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. So I mean, it's, you have you literally have to get I rid had of shirts, everything. Yeah, I had shirts that I was swimming. I saved a couple things that uh, you know were like had sentimental value. Do like, you, like I still have the shirt that I wore on our first episode of the podcast, but it's huge. Oh, that's it's sweet. massive. Oh, what is the guy. what was the just out of curiosity? What you kind remember of shirt it? Was it's a, a yellow and blue rugby shirt, long sleeve rugby. I remember it. That's mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you. I remember that Aww. shirt. I yeah. totally remember that. You used to wear you love that shirt. I still right? do. And that's why that's it's still awesome. in the club. But there's lots of room in my closet because there are less clothes and even the ones that are there are smaller. Do you donate your boxers? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I I threw them in the box, but they came back out. 
<laughs> yeah. They walked. They walked. Uh, it's so funny. I can't get that picture out of my head of you in that uh, that rugby shirt. And as far as like a large uh, piece of clothing that you can wear, even when you're thinner, you can do that. Yeah, you can yeah. get away with a rugby yeah. shirt, right? You let it hang off. You. I'm scared uh, though, Mike. This winter, I might not be able to wear that coat. Oh, that's mm-hmm. no. no. It'll look silly. It will. I like the silly, sleeves but... will be too long, right? Well, I didn't lose anything. Yeah, it'll my look like arm you're in disguise. No, no, but your 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 girth holds up the sleeves uh, too. Probably, yeah, yeah. I'll have to see. Oh, you know what? I'll I'll never get rid of it. I'll never get rid of it because it is the warmest coat. If I you, have. the uncle, we call that the Uncle, uncle Buck. Buck coat. Yeah, yeah, the Uncle Buck have. coat. It's great because it is a long coat, so it keeps your legs warm. It was great when we lived in yeah. New York, or we'd visit New York. because when... Mike, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hijack your segment. No, go ahead, go ahead. I was just but, looking yeah. around. So I've got um, uh, all the shirts now have been downgraded, and some of them are starting to fall away mm-hmm. again. This is one of the better well, fitting shirts. The better fitting shirts? <laughs> Let me make um, a note of that. I have to tell you that, uh, <laughs> you know, going through today, yeah, uh, my my wardrobe is simpler than it's ridiculous. Well, you it's see it all, on the show every day. Uh, it's wicking material. Yeah, it's wicking shirt, t-shirts. It's wicking golf mm-hmm. shirts. If you That's threw it. a glass of water into his closet, it would never hit the ground. <laughs> I, you see the shirt Oscar's wearing right now. Yeah, yeah. I have wicking maybe material. I have maybe three wicking shirts like that mm-hmm. for if I go out to a, a yeah. nice dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now on the other side, uh, where the queen mother has her closet, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, she has allowed me a rack in there, which has all of my like dress stuff that I never touch. I literally never go in that closet. Is it? Do and, you have a dark suit where the shoulders have dust on it? Because I love yes, that look. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. I have like sport coats that I've worn at uh, TMOS live shows. Yeah. yeah. I but that and it, but it stays over there because I do it. But I also was going through the golf shirts and I am really aware. And Carla will love hearing this. Okay. On the show, I have to say that I don't have taste. I have horrible taste in like shirts. How? I'll see something. I'll see something in a store. I'm fine if I stick to basic colors. Because yeah. on the so, show, uh, you're solid, mostly you yeah. wear you mostly wear solids. Yeah, hold but, on, but when he's hold on, the boys camp, back from uh, right, from back. camp. Look at this. He's got his he's got his post camp backpack. Yes. Right here. Nice. Hi, buddy. Hi, Dad. What's happening? Yeah. What, what what are you coming in for? I hit my new club. Oh, happy no. birthday! Really? No way. Are you going to take him? Uh, by the way, tomorrow, the nine-year-old, can you come in the camera? Please? Yeah. So we oh, yeah, can see you. Second. I don't want to. All right. Hold on. Shut up, Frankie. Oh, Frankie. Hold on just a second. Lean in so they can yeah, see you. Showtime. Okay. Hey. So tomorrow. Birthday boy. Uh, wish my son luck tomorrow, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen. You might have seen this on TV. It's uh, This one's not on TV. It's the local qualifier for Drive, Chip, and Putt. Ooh. And uh, Michael is uh, is looking to do that, and uh, we're excited about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, are you looking forward to it? Yes. Oh, good. And so you had a good day out there? No, I hit my new five iron. I almost made a hole in it. Oh. Did you really? What? Wow. Nice. My heart is exploding. Now, my while you've got him, ask him if he thinks Dad is a sharp dresser. Yeah. Do you think I? Uh, do you think I'm a good dresser? Do you think I dress well? Mm, not that much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Right. Go. Take your stuff. <laughs> Take your stuff. Get out. out. So I found that. <laughs> so I found happy. that out uh, doing that. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's very right. cool. There, there are the Flins. There are the Flins. The new Flins. Yeah. There, yeah. there you go. Got a boy. Oh God! I didn't push this. That's the key. You don't push. It happened. It just happened. Sometimes so things surprised. like this happen, yes. Danny. <laughs> oh, man. No, I didn't push it's it. Easy it just all of a sudden. <laughs> when your ship has come in. It's come in, and you got the stock market beat. But the man who can smile, no, the man who's worthwhile is the man who can forget it. Smile. Everything's coming. When his shorts Hold are on. too tight. It's easy to grin when your ship has come in. <laughs> you've got the stock market beat. But the man who's worthwhile is the man who can smile. When his shorts are too tight in the seat. <laughs> okay, christen it, Pookie. Yeah, Pookie. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for remembering Pookie, Mike. Pookie. Yeah. So I just looked at that, and I'm going through, and I'm going, what am I thinking? What is the what worst one thinking? you found? Was it a pattern? The worst one I was thinking was a recent purchase. Oh, no. That was, I just, I can't keep it in the closet. It's kind of a, it's a light blue, dark blue, white camo pattern yeah. golf shirt. That what you've would, never, what I don't, would you might have seen me wear it on no, the show once. No, no, you've never worn camo, not in 13 years. What would inspire you to buy any sort of the camo? The sale, yeah. the sale. Hangover. Yeah, but it's the sale. I yeah. don't buy anything. I know, Mike. Like, he, yeah. he goes to that golf world 
Where, where everything like yeah, you, but it's there's a, a, there's but a like the Callaway. It's yeah, a Callaway yeah, 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 website. Yeah, 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 oh, I mean, yeah. it's fine if it's Callaway. That's great. It's the greatest branded blue camouflage shirt ever. You still don't need a camouflage it's, shirt. It didn't. It doesn't work. Rigo's, Solid colors. Rigo's are Rangers. <laughs> Mr. O'Mary, you can take on a camouflage shirt if you want to. That's the way and it works. What does right blue there. camouflage hide you in? Uh, <laughs> it's just it's you wear like a dark colored. Well, you don't. There weren't any shorts that went no, through. It looks yeah, like a cat threw up on my shirt. That's what it looked like. Uh, and so, is know, it being donated? Gone. Well, uh, yeah, I uh, I donated it uh, to uh, Goodwill, Good. and uh, we have some uh, people that uh, work here that I uh, donated it to, and that's the way. And then the other thing I got uh, got rid of were uh, belts. Yeah, um, a bunch of old biker belts when I was doing the biker thing. Oh, real and, wide. Fit. Yeah, they're super wide, and yeah. man, oh man, that one area of the belt that your you know your pendulated stomach rubs on the leather back yeah. and forth, it's and you disgusting. can definitely tell what uh, what notch you use because it's all yeah. worn by the one notch. Yeah, this is a good segment for me. Hey, ladies, <laughs> I'm not single. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wonderful. Anyway, we have to take a break. Okay. Uh, we will come back with the uh, the town of sound. Yes. Uh, right here on the Mike O'Mara show, and uh, I just don't know what's happening today. Everything's everything's fun. hard, Mike. The belts are worn out nothing is going your way nothing is going my way got that uh yeah we'll take a break and uh, more fun and more thrills right here on the mike o'mara show everybody turn that up so i can hear it i never can hear it greetings my father has he got a condo or does he have an apartment they call him condo bob hello (laughs) i'm condo bob i once saw condo bob bowl a perfect game while receiving a colonoscopy best damn management consultant in the firm he had to have his feet registered as deadly weapons in the state of delaware condo bob has fathered every male child in indonesia since 1985 in the wintertime, snow will not accumulate on his walkway out of respect. To Condo Bob! Condo Bob! Condo Bob does all of his shopping to the TMOS Shopping Center. One click and he gets what he wants. While everyone else has to click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com, Condo Bob simply orders his items through the power of his mind. Got a condo made of stoner. Beware! How you doing, Condo Bob? Condo uh, Bob! This portion of the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Legacy Box, the simplest and safest way to digitize all of your aging videotapes, <laughs> camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures. Legacy Box is a super simple mail-in service. Did you know that magnetic tape uh, like VHS and camcorder tape was only uh, made to last 10 to 20 years? Mm. Yeah, that's right. It not only disintegrates, but it can turn you into a frog. Uh, digitizing your old media keeps it safe forever. It's been a strange. Somebody day. brought up Super VHS on a co- in a conversation today. At work. Yes, I don't remember Super VHS. It was Super Beta, wasn't it? Or, or no, no, there was Super. There was Super VHS, and Beta was always Beta, but Beta had a different variety that was used. For uh, broadcast standards, Legacy I own the Betamax. Yeah, uh, so did I. I was a strong proponent of Beta. Sony. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sony Beta. Yeah, uh, we're all old. Plus, for a limited time, <laughs> Legacy Box is running a nine dollar tape sale. Regularly twenty seven to thirty dollars. There's never been a better time to convert your entire collection. We've all used it. I converted actual film from the nineteen fifties. Uh, it looks amazing, and it's a wonderful film called Smoke This. <laughs> Oscar and Rob converted their videotapes before they disintegrated. And now you too, yes, America, you can relax knowing your irreplaceable moments can be passed on for future generations with Legacy Box. Your memories are meant to be shared, not chewed up by the VCR or worn away with time. Convert your tapes to digital so you can enjoy them for generations to come. Safely, for a limited time, you can get started. Let me start again. Hold on, I read that incorrectly because I'm messing everything up. There's an exclamation point after it. It says, "It's pace. when you're reading something, kids, pace but what I just read was the equivalent of a brick wall at the end of a sentence, and I ran right through it because <laughs> I'm having that kind of day, all yeah. right? Convert your tapes to digital so you can enjoy them for generations to come safely. Perfect. For a limited time, you can get started for just $9 a tape at this special price. There's never been a better time to convert your entire collection. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this exclusive offer. And trust me, people, you going to love it. Sound. 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 Sound.
call this stereophonic sound. Sound town. So it's not big news that the American League won the All-Star game last night. They've won like 10 of the last 12 or something ridiculous like that. So big we news to me. But we don't need to cover that because, mm-hmm. as always, Mike, I know you're interested in the national anthem at the All-Star game. Mm-hmm. Who sang it? Last night, a guy named Ben Platt, and I'm not proud of the fact that I had to Google him. He's a Broadway star. He was in a Book of Mormon. Evan Hansen? And yeah. Evan Hansen, super, yeah. Super yeah. Fan. yeah. Superstar. And he did a beautiful job, I dare say. Let's have yeah, a taste. Yeah, he's a talented kid. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Twilight's last gleaming. Boy, I always think of a high note come yeah. out. Who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. I was very impressed by him. I thought he did a great job. They had a flyover at the end. So anyway, that is. Are you ben- gonna play the? Wait, you play the whole goddamn thing, and then you're not gonna play the end. I'll play the thing. Want to hear the finish? Respectful, not too showy. I thought he yeah. did a great job. Uh, nice fantastic. That's and great. that makes you love America. Here's something that'll make you hate America. Okay. Hasbro, I believe it's something Brothers, the toy company, has revealed that they're going to make an action figure for you if you send them a selfie for 60 bucks. Yeah, you can a have selfie your, action figure. And if I'm you, in. Oh, uh, yeah, it's going to not look like you. That's the problem. It can't. Why? And for well, 60 bucks? Who says? I say. I don't this think is, you this say, is nothing exciting. This you can is get a bobblehead head for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you get yeah. bobbleheads yeah. for yourself. It's, yeah. it's and crap. And they don't look like you either. But you anyway. You know what? I'm going to get you all one. Good. Then you're going to love and them. We'll make them fight. Yeah, I'll make them out of steampunk. But that, we need the shelf. We need the, the shelf. shelf. We can get them and put them yeah. right up on the shelf. And, an be and we'll, we'll need a Rock'em Sock'em Robots ring so we can make them fight. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that would be good. Yes. Wouldn't it be great? If we, yeah. And if we had a real argument, it's yeah. like, get out the thing. Get out the thing. Here's Hasbro making the announcement. We realize that. Our fans wanted to become the characters in the stories that they love. Fans just kept telling us, we want to become an action figure. To the fan, we're delivering one figure. F you. There you you want to become an action figure. No, no, you no. don't. All right, yeah, Mike, people are stupid. Mm-hmm. And this also underscores something I've told you for years. Raccoons are bad. I like. I raccoons. didn't know you. I thought you hated bats. I didn't think raccoons. Oh, no, were, no, no, right. Raccoons are not raccoons bad. Raccoons are smart. No, no, the, they're, they're fa- cute. They're family no. animals. They are. They carry rabies. They steal corn. They're oh, the thieves right. of the night. He's um. He's gar- he you you said they're have, garbage he, animals. You would place fifty radios, radios in, in to corn scare fields the raccoons yeah. away. Back raccoons. when he lived in Kansas. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. these people naked. in Philadelphia mm-hmm. were admiring some raccoons that were climbing. It was a beautiful shot of the city. It was a chain link fence between two buildings, okay. and there was rac- there were cat raccoons climbing, and right. uh, one of them got a little too close. They're so cute. They're like acrobats right now. That was, look at that one. Like, oh. <laughs> oh my God! He bit me! He bit me! He bit me! <laughs> I had to get a tetanus shot and a rabies vaccine shot in my arm. And the shot you saw in the video around my leg, around the wound, was the rabies immunoglobin shot. I am now back to get another rabies vaccine shot today, a week from now, and two weeks after that. And that raccoon charged across an entire sidewalk to bite that guy. Yeah. You don't tell me they're good. I like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in North Carolina, there's Debbie Tomlinson, Mike. She mm-hmm. was a school teacher. Now, 
Uh, Carrie always accused me of having a dad voice. I think anyone who's a father has a dad voice they use. Well, she has her teacher voice. And when she saw a bear and a bear of a fairly large size on her okay. deck, she yelled at the bear and used her teacher voice. And the bear went away. Get down from there. Get down. Get down from there. Right now. Go. 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 You get down from my porch right now. Go. What do you think you're doing on my porch? You get down. Go. How dare you? And it was so great because it was- I put a for sale sign in my yard if I heard that voice. <laughs> I would have. I was the neighbor. Uh, the, uh, there was an elevated deck, and the bear actually had to shimmy down a drain like, pipe I gotta get out to of get here. out of there. Was- you know, I know I talk about that show alone on Netflix. If yeah. you get a chance, it's a History Channel show. And if you get a chance, they, that's what you're supposed to do. Go, bear. Yeah, go. You gotta make go, yourself bear, bear, yeah. bear. Go, go, yeah. go, go. I, Carla does it to me, too, but it's under different circumstances. Yeah, I get that a lot in the neighborhood. I guess it's a different kind of bear. It is. It's much different. Okay. Uh, the movie, Mike, the <laughs> See, show- he finishes. He has to yeah. put his own joke after my yeah. joke. It's it's yeah. a disease. It's not the liver thing. It's his brain. He does that. Go ahead. Just continue. Continue. <laughs> and then I'll finish your joke. Okay. After. I'll repeat the exact same joke in a different way when you do it. Go ahead, please. Thank Hulu you. Hulu has um, brought back Only Murders in the Building, which oh, is great yes. this season. Yes. Boom! And uh, Mike, I wish you'd try it. It's Boo, so good. It sucks. Sh- Shirley MacLaine is in it this season. Oh, is- yeah. <laughs> well, she does play an old lady. But <laughs> one plot point this is not a spoiler. One plot point is they say that Steve Martin made most of his money not from acting on the guitar detective mm-hmm. show Brazos, but he put out a horrible record that was been sampled by like fifty different rappers. Okay, and because of it, they've released the actual record. It's called. Angel in flip flops. Then I hear a sound that I love so. It's a angel in flip flops. Angel in flip flops. Short shorts and tank tops. Could you ever love a man like me? Now I'm walking in the sand with my girl right next to me. She is the one who makes my life complete. Now we're together and we live so happily. I love to hear the sound coming from her feet. Butter, butter. She's an angel in flip pops. Stopping my teardrops. More people agree this with you than like me. Pop rocks. I wish you'd give it another it's try. Good. It's good. It's so All right, great. I'll give it another try. You've yeah. done that for me before. Yeah. I'll, I'll check it out. I it's will. um. I mean, there's been a couple episodes this year that this season that when they've ended, I've watched again. Because Secret tunnel. Yeah. The, well, there's some of that. There's no some spoilers. of that. But mm-hmm. that's all right. That's already been revealed. It's on Hulu. <laughs> and we close right. with this. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, I don't know if you're aware of this. When he vacations, he doesn't always run a rerun. Sometimes he brings in a guest Celebrity host. host yeah. yeah. And, that's uh, last awesome. Night, it's such a throwback, and it's such a great idea. And such really a throwback. Is. This was a, a real treat for me because I liked him when he was on Saturday Night Live doing this bit. Dana Carvey hosted last night. And actually did the monologue, a portion of it, as Johnny Carson, which was a pleasure <laughs> okay, to me. So let's me. let's close with this. Trump has all the best doctors. He just went in for his checkup at the Mayo Clinic, not the hospital. It's a mayonnaise shop in Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> <laughs> and He's Melania doing the old bit. <laughs> heard Trump might be running. She booked a one-way ticket on Air Force Dunn. <laughs> Worthwhile, oh, I'm right? I'm going to go back and watch that. Anyway, that that's all awesome. I got today. Oh, right? my God. <laughs> See, it's the material. Doesn't yes. matter the voice. Rancho that's just hysterical. Cucamonga. Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> hey, we got to get out of here. Our thanks to a wonderful talking head, uh, Daniel Tichy. Uh, and Daniel, thanks so much for your support. We appreciate that. If you would like to be a talking head and visit with us for a chunk of time, uh, all you have to do is send a, a phone number and a request to Email Rob with it. two Bs yeah. uh, at MikeOmeraShow.com. We'd Email Rob, and uh, we'd love to talk to you. That's it. we got to get out of here for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. This is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeOmeraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. When did you first start dreaming of this moment? 